All right, everybody, welcome in. It's another edition of Silver Lining Podcast. I'm Adam. That's Rex. We both are smiling a lot because we're happy to be alive and being able to be part of this great community that has uh, assembled, we'll say. Rex and I were just talking about it. Late June last year, Rex and I ended up walking into a studio in St. George, Utah, talking with my friend, uh, Sean, and telling Sean, we're going to end up writing a book. We've collaborated in talking about writing a book, and we want to do a podcast. Now, Sean has a studio uh, that other podcasters come in and out, and he does all this stuff. And he is like, well, everybody wants a podcast, you know, almost the rolls his eyes when we say we want to do a podcast, because that's what everybody wants to do for some reason. Um, So then he was like, taken back a little bit. Well, what's your podcast about? (laughs) That was the first thing that he said. And I was like, well, it's about kind of my family. And he goes, oh, I mean, you want to tell me any more? And so Rex and I are both just like, Okay, let's just give him what what this is going to be about. So we set up a, a thing to say, hey, do you want to be part of this? Can you help us with our podcast? He said, sure. So we we said, let's do this podcast. So we started a podcast. Rex, I think it was late June, right? Last year? It was. We had our very first podcast. And if any of you go back and rewatch, if you go to Silver Linings Podcast and watch or listen to our very first podcast a year ago, almost a year ago, people will tell you, and this is what I've heard, Rex and Adam, you guys are so different now than you were on that first podcast. Now, do you remember the first podcast? Were you nervous? Were you uh, afraid of judgment? Are you afraid of saying the wrong thing? Was What was going on in your mind? Because you and I have never done a podcast before, and it was podcast number one. I think I was too ignorant to be nervous. <laughs> I didn't know I didn't know the type of judgment that would come. I didn't I wasn't worried about flaws um, because we were just going to be ourselves. I wasn't worried about the facts because we were just going to tell what we knew in our perspective. We weren't tying ourselves to having to do research. So I think ignorance is bliss. I think I was comfortable because I knew you and I could talk through. I knew that dynamic was was good. I didn't know if it'd be interesting to people. How about you? Well, I, I've, well, you know, me being in radio for so many years, I've hosted so many shows. I've had you on as a guest on several of my morning shows across the country that I was on. So I felt great being on the mic with you. And not just that, but the, the hours that we spent at your house on the couch talking about our feelings, about the case, about all that stuff. And you and I were on the same page, you know, all the time. I was like, well... This is great because sometimes in a podcast or a radio show, you want one guy to be this way and one guy to be this way. So there's a lot of, but you and I think, and we're, we're thinking and feeling the same exact things over what was happening in our family, which I felt like that was great momentum for us. So, but as I've told you, our very first podcast almost a year ago, late June, we did it. And people now that go back and watch that go, you guys have changed so much. The healing that has happened between you and I by doing this podcast, people say is really a miracle or amazing how much healing that they can see in our eyes and our face and hear. So I want to say that Rex and I are appreciative of everybody who has watched our podcast, commented on our podcast participated on our podcast, been a guest on our podcast, um, because we now are part of this huge community that has healing powers. I I don't want to sound like Chad or anything like that, but I, I don't understand it. I don't know how it grew legs and organically has gone in this direction from healing but it has. Rex and I were going to do 10 episodes and walk away and write a book. 
but because after the 10th episode, there was so much um, response to us about what this podcast meant to them and what they were getting from it, even though Rex and I were getting it by talking about it, getting out our feelings, that people were saying, you guys can't stop. We need you. And I was like, what? Rex and I were like, what do you mean you need us? What is going on? Is that how you felt? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we didn't have any idea what was happening and why it was happening. And so those comments were just a surprise to us, and we didn't know what to do with them. We just knew we couldn't stop. Yeah. So with that being said, coming up on a year, um, the podcast has grown as far as organically what people that we've had on, guests that we've had on, um, healing that has taken place, people's comments and people emailing us and telling us what this podcast has meant to them. Um, people who were uh, lonely, people that were heartbroken, people that um, needed to hear from somebody else that went through some similar experience in life that they have. And other optimists coming on and talking about their lives has bonded all of us together. And I was telling Rex, I was like, it's really like we've cre- not created, but we now are part of a a family because some people don't have great families. Some people have fantastic families. Some people don't have anybody. Some people are completely alone. So I think what what our podcast is providing for people is a safe place to come to feel loved, not judged, and understood. And so I think that's the direction after a year of doing podcasting, this is the direction I think our podcast is going. So we're going to... And... Me, you're frozen, Adam. So. I'm frozen? Oh, you are frozen. Okay, sorry. Okay. But uh, I'll add one more element to it. Everything apparently is my internet connection. It says it's unstable. Yeah. But one more aspect of it. Some people are here just to figure out what happened in this case. And so a family perspective helps them to figure that out and everyone else's perspective And then a lot of people came to figure it out, and they liked the dynamic that we don't do battle to figure it out. Some people want to do battle, and they want to argue and and be in kind of part of the game, I guess, part of the drama. The people that stayed here in this community don't like that, that approach to it. They like that we can be civil, we can disagree, we can give different perspectives and opinions without belittling each other in it. I mean, all of us, not just you and I, but all of us. So that's an element too. We realize some of you are just here to figure out what happened with Chad and Lori and and Alex. And now we'll continue on with the other, the other trials that are coming up and we will continue that. Yeah. So, you know, Rex and I talk about our podcast going into a direction where we we still want to continue with people healing and feeling good and loved and all those things. But we're also talking about our family perspective on the trials and the thing that happened in our family, which uh, Charles's uh, trials coming up. And then after that, Brandon's going to have a trial that's coming up. So it's not going to end, you know, quickly. I think that we still have probably to the end of this year where we're still going to learn more things that uh, things that maybe have happened that we didn't know. And, you know, on each trial, they're, we're going to learn more and more things. And one thing that I love is that, you know, Rex and I sometimes wildly speculate on here. And some of you wildly speculate and you share your speculations with us that actually make sense to us. And we're like, oh, my gosh, that could have happened because I never even thought of that. So I, that's where I think the bonding starts. Um the criminal, the you know, the true crime details and all that, and there's several podcasts that now are out about this case, and you know they they do their own, um, you know, the way they they do it. Like Rex said, sometimes it's really negative, or they go deep into something that 
is you know written in court and these are on these papers and they have their own agenda and their own perspective on what that actually means um that rex and i don't always agree with what other people say um rex and i talk about what we think and how we feel on this podcast but i would just say anything that you hear about this case on other podcasts i would really think uh i would really think about how you want to process that or what you actually believe or or follow your conscience on when you're watching it well let me i i think we need to clarify that a little bit adam i can okay. clarify because we we're just talking about we're talking about perspectives from family members yes okay. as far as details on the case and well as far as all of it um definitely there are different different ways now I'm thinking the last two or three weeks, Adam and I basically checked out from the case. That was heavier for me, heavier in a way that I hadn't anticipated. And I just didn't follow the details at the very end. I have yet to listen to the witness statements, not because I don't want to. I'm just not there emotionally to be able to do that. And so we aren't good with the details, with the nitty gritty, with staying with every day and reporting it. There are wonderful, wonderful people out there doing podcasts, especially, and news reporters, Justin Lum, Nate, et cetera. A lot of wonderful people that give you those details. We recognize that we don't. So we aren't saying don't listen to other podcasts. Indeed, we're saying please do listen to other podcasts. We love those of you that listen to five different podcasts about this. Get the different perspectives. You know, we've always been supportive of Gigi McElvey and Lauren and John Mathias and, um, you know, other people. STS is a great podcast. You know, we've had other people on. So mm -hmm. um, we are saying, yes, listen to other podcasts. For family perspectives, Adam and I do not represent our family. We represent our perspectives, which even amongst our siblings and or children, may not be the same in our family. True. And we don't know of anyone in our family that represents us, <laughs> podcast, or other family members. Everyone is on their own. So I'm sorry we don't have a family representative to give you the family perspective. Ours is simply a family perspective, not the family perspective. How's that for diplomacy, Adam? I like that. That's what I was trying to say. That's why you came in and saved it. Um, so with that, with all that being said, um, as we go forward with our podcast, we're going to continue to have guests on. Um, we're going to continue to learn and grow. I love that we get um, really smart people on the show. Um, we're going to continue to have other optimists come on and share their stories if they are willing to do it or if they feel like it's going to help them heal by telling their story. Um, so we're going to continue to do that because I think there's a lot of power in that. At least like the three or four optimists that we've had on, I've learned a lot and um, grown a lot and felt more support uh, with those. So we'll continue to do that. Um, and then we're going to, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you guys are doing um, Patreon and I want to, you, you're not going to do the same thing you're doing on the podcast. You're doing more. We're going to continue to do the podcast like it's been for this year. I mean, we're going in that same direction on the podcast. We're not changing anything about our podcast. The only thing we're doing is adding to the podcast um, for Patreon, which would be different things that people want more of extra, not the base. But like, if you think of a sandwich, this is the sandwich and then the chips and the cookies and all the other stuff that's Patreon, right? We're the sandwich. The po podcast is the sandwich. Does that make sense or no? Uh, I don't know. I might go with fried chicken for Patreon. Kind of a, yes, it's a meal, but it's a different meal. I don't Oh, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Um, so anyways, with that being said, that's the, I think people are like, some people are confused about it or what that means and all that stuff. And Rex and I are expert podcasters. <laughs> we, we're, we're trying to figure this out as we go, um, and trying to figure out the best way to keep our community going. 
because it's been such a great blessing in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. That's the bottom line. We we don't want to change what we're doing in the community because it has resulted in us, you, this community. We don't want to change that. We don't want to try to grow it by going out and trying to attract just anyone in there. We just want more of y'all, you know, people that want to come, try to figure it out, support each other, just be a part of of it just the way it is. So we aren't going to change the way it is because um, that hasn't been broken. And we're all for your ideas of who to have on, et cetera. We would like to go with themes. We're going to try to do that, but um, we're certainly open to ideas. We aren't saying we're we can't change anything. We're saying we don't want to change the fundamental dynamics of talk about the uh, trials that are related to the Lori and Chad case. Comment on those. Let's all try to figure it out together. Have guests on that are related to that or related to healing or related to um, just trauma and trauma resources. And PTSD. Yes. Well, yeah, any trauma. So uh, we'll just we'll just continue doing that and hopefully continue with a, if, if Kimberly will continue with um, the Facebook group, uh, that's such a positive, positive atmosphere for those people. We can continue this all together and still produce what we've been producing. Now, also when we started uh, almost a year ago, Adam, you and I started because with the idea of, hey, let's do a podcast so we could have people tell us what they would like to have in the book. And that's why we figured 10 episodes is probably more than enough to do that and more than enough to give our perspective on what's going on. And turns out that worked out pretty well. It's just there was more to do after 10 episodes. Well, Adam and I want to announce right now, you'll hear from us first, we are not going to do another book. <laughs> yes. Yes, we are not authors, and we have proven that. I proven each of us have proven that on a couple of occasions. Yes. However, related to that, Adam, what can you tell us? That we want, you know, a question came to us on a on a live uh, a couple of weeks ago or last week that somebody said, if you guys were to sit down now and write a book. And add or or add to the book that you have, what would you include? And I really, you both, both of us st- sat there and rolled our eyes looking up and trying to think about what would we now put in the book? Um, and so that's a great question because we've learned so much more now that the book is or has been out. We wrote it like last year or we, about 10 months ago, I think it came out or that we finished writing jane probably had her own uh business writing uh, rewriting our stuff but um what would you consider what would you want to hear from rex and i's perspective if we were to add two more chapters to this book Lori's lies and family ties um and so i started really thinking about that and so um, there was a few things what about you well, first of all, I think that that uh, comment was from Hedgehog in Space. Remember, Hedgehog was on a roll making us think um, about a uh, question. So I, yes. I believe that's the right right person it was from. And also, we talked with uh, Jane, our, our good friend Jane, who's one of our optimists, also our publisher, and she encouraged that also to just, she said, we don't have to do a new book, we'll just reprint it with the new revisions that will just be revised. So we could just add a chapter or two. So we have some ideas, but once again, we're going to ask you actually to email us. Email because we try to read the comments from each podcast, but sometimes they're just too many and life happens. We can't see them all in the comments. This is important enough to us. We don't even... we aren't even that great with the emails, but we're going to make a concerted effort to read the emails at the rexandadam at gmail.com. That's rexandadam at gmail.com. 
please give us your ideas of what you'd like to see in the book, what revisions you would like to see. Different topics, additional topics, same topics rewritten now with um, hindsight that we have. So we are very open to your input. And just like any input, we can't promise that we'll use it all, um, but we will appreciate it all. Yeah, and I think one of them that I was thinking about would be a whole chapter and call it Wild Speculations. And not just our wild speculations, but other people who have come on the podcast that have mentioned to us, well, this makes sense to me and explain something. And you and I were like, oh my gosh, I never even thought of that, but that makes sense. Um, it's just opening up other people's eyes to other things that could have happened. We're not saying that they did, but it makes sense that this is something that could have happened. So there's a lot of that going on as well, as far as what's happening on the podcast um, and what we would actually add in a, another chapter in the book. So yeah, we would love to hear what what you guys would want to know. Uh, we've heard a lot of, I mean, there's been so many comments and, and speculations already of what needs to be, what needs to be in the next book. So if we're not doing a next book, we'll just add two chapters of this book. So here's here's an example, Adam, one I think that struck both of us a couple weeks ago um, as far as a wild speculation. Okay. You rem- and I'm not going to remember the person that did it. I'll have to go back and try to find it or that, that said it. But it was so prof- simple and profound as a good example. Um, back in the video in the cop car when Chad was in the back seat talking to Emma, we'll all remember that. And Emma made a... a uh, um, we take it as a slur of Colby. Don't worry, Dad, we are Colby. You know, and we all took that to mean that somehow um, she was saying he was irresponsible financially because they were they were talking money. And one of our optimists said, I'm not sure that was about finances. Maybe it was about loyalty. Because Colby of course, in court, very famously called Lori out on murdering her children, his his uh, brother and sister. And obviously not being loyal to the murder, mm-hmm. Lori as a murderer, okay? And maybe Emma was saying, don't worry, Dad, we will be loyal to you, not like Colby was not loyal. And that was... To me, that made all the sense of the world. That was such a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Now, we don't, we don't know what it was, so it's a wild speculation. But that's just an example of wild speculations we'd love to entertain because it made at least you and I, if not some other people, think completely differently about that comment. Yeah. And there's been so many things that have been added or maybe even subtracted where we thought something and then because of what happened... We're like, well, I got to take that off my plate because I don't. That definitely couldn't have happened. Um, but then listening to, I think for me, one of the things that I would add into the book is listening to text and conversations between Lori and Chad. Now we would leave out the all the sex that Rex doesn't want to talk about the loing. Every time Rex and I go on, every time we go on court TV, they bring up the law, like Chad's cheesy sex talk to Lori. Um, we'll leave yeah. that part out. That is disgusting. I'm all all for sex and talking about, but not not Chad and Lori's, especially Chad's writing ability. That just, yeah, it's right now. Slow. I'm seeing a little bit of throw up in my. You, you're almost at the top of your neck. It's thinking about it. Yeah. So that chapter probably won't make it into if we do two more chapters on this book, uh, that won't be on there. But other things um, about them, the way that they talk to each other, the speculation that now we have of what Chad's kids probably were, were like or, or is going through now that we've heard that they their testimonies, um, other things that we've learned about, you know, Lori and have she maybe just took a step back and was questioning Chad because the plan wasn't going to to plan. Um, is this really something that is supposed to happen? Like asking permission or keep wanting to get more um, clarity on certain things. So there's a lot of new things that, you know, maybe we can add to the book. Yeah. And we won't say, we aren't saying we'll add all of that. 
but we're just saying we're open to wild speculations. Yeah, let us know what what you think, what would you would want in the book. Again, this is a year later after we wrote the book, adding two more chapters. What now would you want to add to the book? If you've read the book, what what did you what did you leave once you read the book? Like, man, I wish they would talked about this particular topic more. Yeah, um, and that's a good point. And specifically, what you want to hear from us. Not in general, and remember, Adam and I don't have a whole lot of insight that y'all don't have. You know, in fact, in a lot of cases, we have Wes. But what do you want to hear from from me and Adam in the book? Yeah. So if you've read the book, let us know what when you left the book. A lot of people, oh, I loved reading the book. I loved this part of the book, um, or whatever it is. There's been a lot of compliments, a lot of reviews, and things like that, and we appreciate all that. But at the end of the book, there's got to be something in your head is like, man, I I wish they would have talked or more about this or this, or maybe they didn't even hit this topic. I wish they would have. So that way we'll, we'll be able to uh, get this, the next two chapters uh, out and reprint the book after that happens. So I'm not sure how long that's going to take the process or anything, but we're throwing it out there now. Okay. Speaking of books, I have to share this. Had a text from Tom um, this morning or last night. Just want to let you know my book will be available on Amazon Wednesday. That's tomorrow. Um, So thankful to y'all in the media. I don't think of that, Adam. We are in the media, I guess. Yeah. So thankful the media have been so supportive. My goal is get something good out of my experience as a juror. And because of all the people I've gotten to know, it's been more than I could ever have hoped for. So, um, quick note from Tom, but tomorrow, this will finally be available on Amazon. There you go. We wish you, we wish you the best of luck, Tom. We know what happened when our book first came on Amazon. <laughs> we wish the best of luck. Looking forward to um, to reading that. Tom certainly has a unique perspective from his experience as a juror and just from being a good, good, thoughtful person, sat through most of Chad's trial. um, And, and uh, we just look forward to it. Wish him, wish him the best with this. Um, I haven't heard how uh, our friends from STS are doing on their book tour around the country, how that's going for them, but we're sure supportive of them too, from uh, Joel and Karma that are doing their book tours. So yeah, a um, lot of lot of good insights available. Yeah. All right, Adam. That's it. we're back to our old half hour uh, podcast. Yes. Why we're back? We're, we're back. Um, and by the way, I didn't realize till just now. Is my background blurred out? Yes. Yes. I didn't even do that. I don't know how it worked, but yeah. I was like, or we've all been collectively drinking. You can't see my hats then. Okay, good. Can't see your hats. All right, good. And we can see your great grandfather behind me. Yes, granddad. The West Texan right there. Alan Holder, one of the greatest go ropers in world history. Still holds the record for go roping. Does he? Yeah. Because that we're gonna he's never gonna be broke. Never gonna be broken because they don't have that event anymore. So <laughs> oh, so he the record he stands forever. There's no one's ever gonna do that. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, listen. We appreciate you guys, Optimist, and people who listen to our podcast. Um, and, you know, we're almost a year into this podcast thing. And, you know, it's grown um, so much. And there's so much great things that have come out of this, not from Rex and I, but from you guys have really um, bonded as a family. So I consider this podcast a really big family that we're all here to support each other. And hopefully the direction that this podcast is going will just continue to grow and more people will benefit from it like Rex and I have. Um, And uh, we wish that, you know, you continue to to watch and listen and tell your friends about it. And hopefully that you're healing and feeling good about every single time you come to our podcast. And we will look forward to seeing you on a live or at least talking to you on a live this coming Saturday. Did we change the time to that, Adam? Or We probably need to because you're going to be working. Yes, I actually have to be doing my day job. So watch for the announcement 
um, either on our YouTube channel or on, and or on Facebook or StreamYard, wherever you see podcasts, so you get notifications. When we schedule it, we'll do it. But uh, normally it's 4.30 Saturday at Mountain Time. Mountain Time. But you'll be on Pacific Time, so it might be 4.30 Pacific Time, maybe even 5 Pacific Time, depending if you get out of work. Okay. We'll see when, what happens with my work schedule. Uh, and you don't mind not showing up, Adam. So no, I need you. Here. No, no, I'm not doing a live by myself like you did. I'm not, I can't do that. All right. We'll see you all Saturday. Thank you. Thank you.